welcome back guys so in this video i'm going to share my experience with the moto g 5g after using it for more than six months now and the device is running on july security patch after the latest update and still it is running on android 10 so much behind in the updates department uh, the phone is made out of plastic and uh, even the the uh, frame is made of plastic and there's a dedicated google assistant button on the left side and the volume button on the right so regarding battery life first i will want to go into so i'm really impressed with the battery life i'm getting with this device um, every time i get more than seven or eight and eight hours of even with you heavy usage and that does not change so in terms of battery life with the 5000 mAh battery and stock android and the optimization of the uh, the ram management and everything does helps in giving some awesome battery life so really impressed with it um, the display is 6.7 inch full hd and hdr 10 certified and no issues in display but it's 60 hertz which is uh, i think it was one of the main reasons it did not sell that much uh, because the compet competitor even that time was offering 19 or 90 hertz and even 120 hertz The speaker quality is really good and even with the single speaker it performs really well. This had this RAM uh, adaptive performance option which really helps in the RAM management and it offers one of the best RAM management in this, uh, in this price range. Um, no apps closer up, even after hours um, the app was still in memory so it works really well. It also has this very cool feature where the fingerprint sits on the back of the phone in the Moto logo. So you can just swipe down and the notification is expanded. So it makes it easier for one handed usage. So yeah, good use of the back fingerprint scanner. Now coming to the camera interface, this camera interface is really great. The app just, um, the app was updated when I received the phone and the updated app feels very similar to Gcam. It has a lot of options and features and uh, overall is a very good app. The camera quality I would say just okay for the price. It has three cameras, macro, ultra wide and the main camera. No depth sensor but that's good. This is the macro camera and the macro camera does have auto focus. So it's not useless and it does uh, takes us usable pictures. You can see the quality is not that bad at all. one is the and there is an 8 megapixel ultra wide this is the normal camera the main one next it is the 48 megapixel um, it has the samsung gm1 sensor i think so a sony, sony sensor would have been better and the photos are just about decent In the video department it did impress me it can take 4k and uh, with stabilization as well so that was pretty nice it also has this lens feature so in the camera app itself you can just point it out at something is a text or so you can translate know about it and it all uses the ai from the google to figure out what's camera is actually seeing and this has a lot of extra features in the app like cutout spot color cinema graph the spot color in the spot color you can just uh, uh, pick out a color you can just drag and drag the circle to the color you want and everything else just desaturated uh, saturates so you can drag this anywhere on any particular color and you can also adjust um, the kind of uh, saturation that you want this the strength of the filter you can see right now uh, just 
selected the brown color and everything else just goes a little black and white so this is also really good and it just happens in life so you do not have to use it uh, on a photo editor app it also has this editor cutout function so you just have to click a picture of a human object it requires face so when you click a picture it automatically just uh, uh, deletes the background so that is a really cool feature as well and it's in the app you do not need any third party um, editor and it, this phone also supports AR core uh, the Google AR services so you can have these AR stickers which is also embedded in the camera app you can also play AR games like Pokemon Go and Sectra so it's a really cool feature and it's, uh, you can explore it and use it as you want uh, a little fun addition the performance of the phone is really good and it has the 750G which I think works really good for daily usage it also has 11 5G band support which was that time a real big deal but 5G is still not in India so it wasn't much talked about and not nobody gave it a lot of attention but yeah that's good to know and this is the Moto app which is present in all the Motorola phones and this actually sets the stock Android apart because it just gives enhance that gives those uh, chosen features that many people want like this customization and color options you can choose font colors and uh, etc to customize the look of your device so many stock android does not give this feature but this one has that in the motorola app itself and uh, the usual wallpaper app The gestures it was also very iconic to Motorola the double twist to switch on the camera or the job to switch on the flashlight it's very iconic to moto actions and this you can find it here as well and they have also added a lot of other uh, gestures like uh, three finger screenshot and you also get this option to scroll screenshot automatically to take a, a long screenshot so takes it automatically you do not have to stitch it manually it can be useful when you are taking screenshot of long web pages and you can also edit it with very handy uh, screen uh, this marker tool so very easy to edit your screenshots if you want to mark out specific portion of the screenshot lift one lock is just if your phone is lying on the table you can just pick it up and it will automatically unlock if you are have enabled the face unlock this also really cool the swipe to split option so if you want to use multi window you can just swipe across from the left or right side and the app will automatically go into multi window mode which is really good if you are trying to multitask write something or watch videos at the same time so just enable this from here and you can just use the multi window anytime really quick way to use the multitasking button So overall I don't think Motorola like at that time it was a really good phone and uh, I bought it because I thought it had stock Android 5G and a good processor it also had the 750G which was the first time uh, uh, launched in India so it was a really good processor at that time as well and I was a Moto G5 Plus user previously so I just upgraded from that and I still do not I think regret that decision and also I really like this Moto display which is very uh, very good to have you can just easily see all the notifications in just one when you just tap on your phone it works as an avian display um, of course it's not AMOLED display they should have given AMOLED display but so it could not be used as an always-on display but still good enough you can also reply 
if you tap and hold on to it you can just reply it as well if you have given the permissions it's a really good feature and really uh, iconic of motorola as always a moto display or peak display now as they call it you have this new google uh, the motorola play game time so is your usual game option when you are playing a game or something the options comes up uh, to screenshot or quick uh, you know turn off the notification or something you can also disable it uh, the calling etc so i'm playing the bgmi and you can see you can just take a quick, quick screenshot and if you have whatsapp or discord that shortcut will also appear in a small window as well so giving performance wise i think it works really well for the price you can play PUBG, Call of Duty and uh, 60 FPS uh, although 60 FPS is not available in PUBG or BGMI you have to use the GFX tool but in Call of Duty 60 FPS is available I've also posted a couple of videos so you can check that out as well and Jensen Impact it does not play that well you can play as 30 FPS at low settings and it may it's just playable and you can just um, there's not a lot of trouble but yeah it's not a very good experience playing Jensen Impact can see sony goes up to ultra settings in pubg so yeah but i think the 750g is a capable processor and it can give you uh, it can last up to two to three years and it also supports 5g so it's really good I do not ex uh, experience any heating so it does not ever felt like it was getting hot um, I played a lot of Call of Duty and I never felt any issue so I don't think this phone and so it has a plastic body so yeah, yeah, no heating for me so uh, gaming experience wasn't and wasn't bad at all so you can actually play games on it for longer period of time without worrying about the heating or the FPS drop. I think this is a very all-rounder phone, Moto G 5G, and it could have been successful, but Motorola just started out releasing phones after phones after this. Ignored this phone altogether, like no support for a firmware like Android 11 is still not here, Android 12 has already been released and they have providing Android 11 on their older devices so that is not at all like uh, liked by the consumers and there is also a news of couple of bugs related to network and calls and uh, I myself faced a bug with the Bluetooth it wasn't working and I had to get the motherboard chain so it was a uh, uh, hardware problems so quality control issue was also there um, and the lack of the features like 750g is fine but the camera is lacking and it is very bulky as 212 grams and uh, very hefty to use so and then on in one month after the Mi 10 i launched with 120hz display slim design and 108 megapixel camera so there was no chance for moto it only had a stock long stack stock android going for it so maybe because of that people bought it but other than that i i don't think there wasn't any reason for anyone to buy this phone i just personally went for it because i was using moto g5 plus and i just thought i will continue with motorola i don't think i regret the decision but yeah i think mid and i is still a better choice uh, and stock android is what going for it and now they have launched the moto edge and that is like crazy if they have just put some effort in moto g 5g it could have been a really game changer because it was one of the few 5g phones at those times which has 11 5g sub 5g bands which was the most and it had that like usb for it but it, they did not upsell on it they did not try to uh, market it that way or also like uh, provide support for it and yeah maybe that's why it just failed i think it failed because motorola g5g is out of stock on flipkart for months now and it did not receive a lot of sales and customer development is also not very popular among it's only one developer working on it 
and there is an unofficial image os for it but that's it and um, yeah it's a good phone i would say it's all rounder phone if you want something stable and also the pricing was a bit much it was as released at 21000 indian rupees and they could have priced priced it at 17 18000 like after sales they were selling it at for 19000 so i think they could have gone for that as the launch price but yeah that also was a bit overpriced for the offering like the display and the build and the camera wasn't up to the mark what was going for it was the processor and the stock android so i think this is a good cam phone and uh, maybe you can find it if on used or refurbished you can go for it but otherwise motorola edge the new edge fuse and everything they are just perfect and you can just uh, uh, like take them over it any day so i think motorola did it to it themselves and why the moto g5 g failed so terribly so that was it for my video and i hope you guys liked it my thoughts on moto g5 g and what i've experienced so far in six months and uh, thank you for watching guys and i'll see you in the next one